Hi there, welcome back, and we're talking about AEW this past week, and we're talking about MJF versus Juice Robinson, right? Yeah, I thought that was a pretty uh, decent match, I would think, because uh, Juice Robinson got to play bloody too in that match. Yeah, that match lasted a long time, if I'm right. Yeah. I mean, it did last a long time. I'd say it was a pretty good of a match. Um, obviously, MJF came out on top, but I mean, I still, I still feel like it's a good match to watch. Yeah, I think uh, MJF was started the first half of that, then Juice ended the other half, but then MJF got the best of Juice, and he got the win. Yeah. and But, of course, he got tacked at the end by the guns. Oh, yeah, sure. And one thing about this whole feud is we've been seeing this uh, kind of devil figure mask uh, appearing up on the screens here and there. Or because one time we saw this whole devil group uh, beat up uh, Jay White backstage. Yeah, and the thing also is, but didn't MJF get some help from the... Yeah, the acclaimed. No, before the acclaim. Oh, it was from uh, Roddy in, the, in, in the, the kingdom. Yeah, what was he saying? MJF or whatever his name yeah, is. Max. Max, <laughs> Max. He was like, I'm right in front of you. Why are you yelling? Yeah. The way he does his little thing yell all the time. I mean, because uh, he, he was like, you're, so you're going to pick us, right? <laughs> You know what? <laughs> you know, I'll pick you two guys. And then the claim was all like, are you going to pick us? <laughs> yeah. Was I actually thought yeah. he was going to pick um, the claim. Yeah, me I mean, too. that would have been a pretty, you know, awesome team to go with. Uh, but then he wouldn't even do the scissors. No, he just kind of closed the scissors. <laughs> he goes, hey, close them. <laughs> so I was just curious. Like, well, okay, this is cool. Like, what what is MJF doing? Like, I'm just curious to see that. But. I was surprised at the end how nobody, how he didn't choose any of them. But I did like at the end when MJF was walking out when Kenny Omega came out. Yeah. Offered, well, asked him for a match and he accepted. Because that match determines if uh, Max breaks his record for uh, a title reign. Yeah, I think he'll be at 341. I think he's at 341 right now. And the other, uh, Kenny Omega is 346. So during the a Saturday, I think he'll be like three forty five or three forty four, something like that. Yeah, which MJF would, would have to win the match because then he goes into face Jay White at right, full gear. And if he wins the match, then he's the longest running. Yeah. So I I don't know I I want MJF to win. I I think he is going to win. Um, well, I must he kind of has to though. <laughs> okay. All right, and we were talking about this earlier though, but I want to know what did you all think too? Should should have. Juice Robinson got a a match with MJF. I it, to me it didn't make sense. Why would Juice Robinson, who's you know he's a tag team partner, he's not a solo act, he's he's not anything dominant, he's not an elite, he's he doesn't have his own you know unique style. And why? Why was he chosen? Just because of what was a battle royale or something? Yeah, for the uh, ring, his ring. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. There's a lot of good wrestlers out there that should be facing MJF, and MJF doesn't have to fight every week. And if he wants to, okay, let's get some good names out there. You know, let's let's bring up some feuds. Let's let's do that. Not just a random just because he won. Uh, match, yeah, because uh, they did a battle royal every year since uh, twenty twenty. But it's not; it's just not about that. It's yeah, just sure, about yeah. him being a superior. Like he's a heavyweight. He's a world champion. And this is one of the things I told you about earlier is that why CM Punk left uh, WWE because he wasn't getting the respect that he deserved as being a champion. Yeah, and this is what I see with MJF. You know. I was just like, Juice Robinson, why would he get an opportunity to fight MJF? I mean, yes, I didn't see the last two weeks, but it even though if I would have saw him, it would still would have made sense. It would like I mean it would not make sense. Anyways, like I said, they got too many wrestlers and Tony Khan needs to figure out what he's gonna do because it ain't working. Yeah. All right, so who else do we have? Uh I think we're gonna fast forward a little bit. All right. To uh, Rick Flair coming out. Yeah, with Sting, because I think Sting's going to retire next year, right? Yeah. In March. And uh, Revolution, yeah. Wow, okay. So he was going to end his career the way he started on the same month, I think, or whatever it was. And, of course, not the same thing, but in wrestling. Yeah. 
Uh, so that's that's pretty good. I mean, that, that's pretty nice that he's finally going to retire. Because I thought he retired ten years ago, but he's coming <laughs> back. Yeah. Because yeah, I was yeah, I was right. Because um, I mean, because last week he he did his retirement speech. Yes. And then of course uh, it came out to say Tony Khan has a gift for Sting, and that I was Ric Flair. It yeah. was pretty awesome to me. Yeah, it was. You know, I was surprised to see him. Like, wow, what the heck? I mean, the good. You know, I understand now. Rick, I mean, Rick Flair can do that because you know Vince McMahon doesn't have a stronghold on the the WWE anymore. Yeah. So the, they're letting these. Well, I think they're assuming they're letting these wrestlers do a little freelancing. You know, earn some extra money, put a name for themselves out there. Because that was one of the reasons they let these wrestlers go is because they wanted them to to go on their own make a name just like the way uh cody rhodes did you know oh yeah yeah and and that's what they want so hopefully this is a chance for other wrestlers to do that and follow rick flair's lead and start going out yeah because with the documentary right he he was champion all all around the world right yep i'm right in the documentary all right so then if uh so then darby comes out oh but darby was already there um and then christian comes christian comes out and and I guess he wants a match with Sting, right? Is that what yeah. Because Kristen came out with Luchasaurus. And what's the other guy's name? Nick Wayne. Nick Wayne, you know. And I guess he wants to have a match with them. And he even offered, oh, well, we want to get Ric Flair. You know, <laughs> like, but we all know Ric Flair does, can't wrestle no more. He's too old, you know. Poor yeah. Poor guy. Uh, and... Because um, the question he asked sent some pretty rude remarks to Ric Flair. Have you, have you heard some of them? Yeah, Ric Flair just smiled. <laughs> like, yeah, you could go in and say, you know, if I was younger, you would get your ass kicked. But now you can say all you want because you know you're, you know, you're safe. Yeah, and saying Ric Flair actually had some fun during also before I think question came out because saying wanted Ric Flair to do a chop on his chest. And <laughs> and they're like, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Um, just got the old days. <laughs> exactly, they would do that, and they still do that to this day. All the wrestlers, um, but then, but Ric Flair said he's going to be there until the end of his the, for the final match. Yeah. So I don't know if he's be like like on the ringside all the time. Or Hope so. <laughs> uh, he should they belong in the ring? <laughs> yeah, because Ric Flair's a character. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a good character there. He says some some good stuff, outrageous stuff sometimes. Uh, all right. So then at the backstage, um, uh, who was it? It was Darby and Sting were talking. No. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Adam Copeland that was there. Um, yeah, because uh, there was an interview with Adam Copeland, remember? That uh, he was, she was talking oh, about okay, with Christian. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I thought they were talking to Edge, but yeah, Adam Copeland is Edge. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, who the fuck? We because the interviewer bring, bring it up okay, uh, I don't, Christian to yes. Adam Copeland. And yeah. say about like, wait, are you, are you still trying to be, have a friendship with him? Yep, and he said yes, right? Yeah, and that's when uh, Sting and uh, Darby, yeah, Darby came out, and they're pretty much telling him, "Snap out of it! What are you thinking about? You think you can still have a friendship? You think you can still do all this with the way he is right now?" And he goes, you, "Like they said, you got to get real and it's like the um, blinders off." Yeah, take your blinders off, and I don't know. I I think it did work. Um, uh, Adam Copeland was in those days at the end, like what, what, like man, like he had to really, you know, swallow what they, what they were telling him. And who knows? Let's see what happens. If Edge is going to be one of them, or be one of those surprise entrants at the very last minute. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? We had that last match, the main event with um, Orange Cassidy, and uh, it was Orange Cassidy someone else. It was Okada. I think it was the one. Oh, with Daniel Bryan's, yeah, right, and, and Claudio. Uh, Claudio. That um, was a good match, I would say. Yeah, I, I kind of enjoyed that match. I yeah, because I like Claudio. I think Claudio's a you know like a, he's a a, a a brawler, you know. So um, I like the way he matches, the way he comes out, you know, holds himself. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it did it did go a lot back and forth because um, they went over time limit that one. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard they went past two hours. It was two hours four minutes. Two hours and four minutes? Yeah. No. It yeah. Two hours. That's the whole show. All right. Well, either way, it was over time, whatever the time allowed, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I get. All right. And then uh, at the end, who won? It was uh, was it was uh, it was Okada team, right? It was Orange Cassidy? Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Because Brian Ellis was injured at ringside. 
And what did uh, yeah he was had somebody's face, but I was I, I rewinded it to see exactly where he got hit. He, he didn't get hit hard. He was <laughs> nothing. I'm like, oh, why why are you crying? <laughs> you get up. Yeah. Um. But Orange Cassidy came out of the beginning, had his backpack and pulled out his the championship belt. Oh yeah, that's right. His yeah. <sighs> I was so pissed off at that. Why did they have to give him a championship belt back? I know. <laughs> he doesn't even he's not even respect the belt. He puts it in a backpack. He doesn't respect the belt. He shouldn't deserve to be a champion. <laughs> Anyways, that's just my saying. What is your saying about that? But um all right. So um when when is the next one? The next pay per view? Uh be full gear in November I think it's in seventeenth. All right. And any matches ready? Started up yet? Um, yeah, we got a few actually. We had JY, of course, MGF. We had some other ones. I can't really remember on the spot. Uh, I think there was like the three more that were announced. All right. What about the women's matches? Um, anybody coming up? I don't think so. No. All right. All right. Well, well actually, else? we should have about um, Collision coming to San Antonio. All right. Oh yeah, attended. that's right. You got an alert today. That Collision's coming to San Antonio. Yeah. So uh, we just yeah we heard that Collision come to our hometown, San Antonio, Texas. Um, but they picked a different location this time because last year they were at Freeman Coliseum, which is literally right next to it with the Frostbank Center. Yeah, they're literally right next to each other. One's a Coliseum, one's a full venue. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Coliseum they had last time was smaller. They picked a larger venue. Yeah, for Freeman, it's made for like yeah smaller venues and smaller bands, concerts, whatever. So how do you think they're going to fill that up? Uh, it's hard to defend these people because their ticket sales are down. <laughs> well, San Antonio always brings everybody out for wrestling. This is a wrestling city, so everybody loves, well, mostly everybody loves wrestling. So I don't know. Last time they were here, the, the, the show was pretty good packed, but of course it was a Coliseum. Uh, let's say they fill it up. Yeah, like I want to say like they, they can, but it's hard to defend them when they every week there's like nobody there. <laughs> well, good thing it's not the Alamo Dome because Alamo Dome is what oh. 44,000 people. <laughs> we've been to those every, because those the rooms. the Frost Bank Center is this, is an actual size arena, not as big as, as the Alamo Dome, but I think Frost Bank can fit fit over twelve thousand people. I think. Yeah. Well, I don't remember, but yeah, I think it was up to eighteen if I'm right. Yeah, it was like fifteen or eighteen. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, I like I like prediction too. I think um, Donna Rosa has to return there because she's been oh, out for right. uh, I think a few area. months. Yes. She's been injured, and that's her hometown. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure she returned there. Uh, who has a belt right now? Uh, Chris Stantlander. Okay. Oh no, I think she, she has TBS. Chris Stantlander. Uh, Soraya. Oh, it was Sheeta. Sheeta. Sheeta has it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Carl Sheeta. All right. Well, we'll see. Till next time. Peace.